I would say somewhere around the ninth or tenth grade, I was in the library and uh, I was reading a book on uh, a battle. I think the battle was Iwo Jima. I think that's what it was, and it talked about the Marines. And uh, then I started reading other books about the Marines, and uh, and I always told everybody, I'm going to be a Marine. <laughs> And so, like I said, I'm about 10, 11 years old at this, and uh, they uh, they just kind of fascinated me. And then the uh, uh, watched a lot of the Vietnam stuff on on TV, and and uh, of course the guys that were doing, well, I mean, the army was doing a lot of heavy fighting too. But it seems that the Marines captured the headlines a lot, and that's, that's where I want to be. I want to be with those Marines. And. Uh, so in the uh, end of my junior year of high school, 1968, I joined the Marine Corps. And I went to Paris Island boot camp and graduated uh, out of boot camp, went to ITR at Camp Lejeune. And uh, from there, I stayed for the next 16 years. And then out of the blue, I was, happened to be a series gunnery sergeant at Paris Island at the time. I said, hey, Morton, there's an Army general on the phone for you. I, had, I didn't know no Army generals. And it was Andrew P. Chambers, 1st Cavalry Division Commanding General. He says, a mutual friend of ours says you're getting out of the Corps. And he talked to me a little bit. He says, well, how'd you like to draw for the Army? Because that was my primary MOS. I was a 4611 combat illustrator. And uh, he says, I said, I'd like to think about it. I thought about it. I said, yeah, I'll do it. And so in uh, 1984, I, Fort Hood, <laughs> I checked into Fort Hood as the division illustrator. Uh, one of the things that I was involved in a lot was uh, uh, recruiting, uh, helping develop recruiting posters and uh, uh, advertising. Uh, uh, I did a lot of uh, historical illustrations uh, for, uh, for Marine Corps history. And... Uh, also, I ran a, uh, in the uh, graphic shops who make training aids for the instructors and things, slides, uh, uh, posters, uh, overhead transparencies, all kinds of visual medias uh, for the instructors to use as training aids for their students. I, had a, I helped uh, rebuild the First Cab Museum uh, to get it ready for recertification. So I got to go in there, and uh, they pretty much just turned me loose as far as uh, designing some of the, some of the exhibits, uh, some of the artwork that just hung on the walls. And, uh, and then, like I said, then I was a tech advisor uh, uh, for a couple, couple movies. Uh, didn't appear in them or anything. I just had to, you know, okay, that's correct or that's not correct. And, uh, uh, Saving Private Ryan, uh, Band of Brothers. Uh, uh, I didn't. Ha I, I was a tech advisor, but yet I wasn't. I was feeding information to Dale Dye when they were down in New Zealand form, uh, fr uh, filming the Pacific, and uh, I had a, a very large uh, pile of information on Iwo Jima because uh, I knew the man who took the first flag racing pictures, Lou Lowry. And, uh, and I had a tremendous amount of, uh, of uh, pieces of information about uh, Iwo Jima and uh, Guadalcanal and some of the other things. Like I said, I was feeding Dale Dye uh, some of this via the internet. And uh, that was one thing about uh, Spielberg and Hanks is they wanted uh, as much accuracy as possible. It was fun. Like I said, the, the biggest thing that I, uh, I used my skills to try to make things better for the soldiers that were under me. Uh, I enjoyed soldiers, Marines. Uh, I have really enjoyed going out in the field with them. Uh, even after I retired, uh, I, commanders would invite me to come out with their units uh, to take pictures and things so that I could draw from them, you know, and do things for the companies and the regiments and battalions. And uh, I would sit down, I'd get down in the dirt with them in the mud and take pictures and sit down and eat chow with them and you know it just I just love being with the with the people and that's probably one of the biggest things that I missed